Hello, my name is Will Carmack, and in today's After Effects tutorial, I'm going to be breaking down how I did this motion graphic for Michelle Carre's latest YouTube video about becoming a trial lawyer. The context for this motion graphic is running through all the possible victims and suspects of a crime. So we're gonna learn how to composite a boring photo into a crime scene photo and then put that into a cool animated motion graphic. And I gotta let you know this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. So one of the first big things that I do before I start any of these motion graphics is get a bunch of assets. And you can see right here that I downloaded a bunch of different scanned paper textures that I could then eventually overlay on top of any photo to make it look papery. And so my advice, I got all of these from Motion Array, which I do have a paid subscription to, and it is my favorite stock um, asset website. However, stuff like this, where it's just textures you can find free online, if you just Google paper paper texture, paper scanner texture. You can even go to Pexels, PNG Tree. Uh, I'll link free resources in the description below where you can find some of these assets for yourself. And today we are gonna start with this photo of this man who in Michelle's video was a victim of murder. What you wanna do first is grab the photo that you wanna turn into uh, a stylized crime photo. We're gonna click on it and drag it right here into a new composition. So first things first, if you wanna make a crime scene investigative photo, this looks pretty tacky. So in effects and presets, we're gonna type in hue, and we're gonna grab hue saturation. What we're gonna do is take the saturation, bring it all the way down to zero. Looks a little weird. So we're gonna to go to Lumetri color and put that on there as well. And under creative, you'll see sharpen and we'll crank sharpen up. Just gives it kind of this crispy look that I thought looked really nice. Now this still looks like a normal photo. We, we want make it look like it's kind of papery textured. So what we're gonna do is grab one of these paper assets that I was just talking about. This one looks really nice. I'll drag that into my composition. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the track mat and put it onto Tucker. And I'm doing that in case, you know, I scale down Tucker here. I'm not getting paper around the edges. Now my paper texture is gonna be locked onto my image no matter where I move it. And so for the blending mode, some people would tell you to do screen, but that's almost too bright. It's not giving me enough of the original picture. You could do lighten, but again, it's almost getting rid of too much of the texture. So I found that the best blending mode is actually color dodge. This looks epic because this preserves a lot of the texture in the image and also the blacks underneath of it. So I'm gonna find the anchor point right here and to move our anchor point, we'll hit Y and we'll move it towards the center and I will just scale this down and I'll try to line it up with the photo as much as I can. Now, I think this looks really nice right here. And now we'll grab our parent and link tool and connect it to Tucker, our original photograph. So now the paper texture is locked on and will always move with our photo. And now to stylize the picture even further, you'll see in the video, I added a little bit of blood stains and blood splatter to this image to give it some more complex stylistic look, especially because in the video he was a victim. And again, this is something that you can Google and find online or find in something like Motion Array. But I actually didn't Google blood. I found these labeled as grunge textures on Motion Array. And this one looked kind of like a blood spat splatter. So I'll grab this asset and bring it into our composition. You can see here we kind of have this like white paint splatter. And what I'm gonna do is in effects and presets, I'm gonna type in fill. And if I drag fill onto this layer, it's gonna turn red which is very nice. I'll make it a little darker red, uh, like in the video. It matches more of like a natural blood color. I think that looks really nice. Everything in this layer, we want it to be infinitely locked onto our photo. We're gonna grab our track mat, pick whip, and attach it to our first photo. So now this blood will only show up where our photo is. And I'll just line this up properly with the photo like this. I think that looks really nice. To give it more stylized look, I'll grab another one of these like grungy blood type textures. I'll copy and paste that fill effect onto the same one, rotate it 90 degrees. I'll, you know, position it somewhere like this and like everything else, we're gonna grab our track mat and attach it to the original photo. So now this can only be where the photo is. And bam, just like that, we kind of created a bloody crime scene photograph. But for best practice, we'll grab our blood assets and put them underneath of the paper texture. So now the paper texture is also on top of the blood. While that might not make sense practically in real life, it looks good to me. And so now our next step, blending all these assets together, is I'll select everything, right click and pre-compose and name this crime photo. 
To make this perfect, we're gonna right click on the crime photo and go to layer styles. And you'll see right here, inner shadow. We'll click on that. And now to give this inner shadow some good distinction, you'll see size right here. We'll crank up size and opacity. So this is with inner shadow, without it. You can crank up the distance so it's affecting more of the image. And with the angle right here, you can select where you want uh, the shadow to kind of show up the most. So you can play around with that. I think this looks really nice. And then for a final touch, what I did is I added a Lumetri color to uh, this new pre-comp and I'll crank up the contrast, maybe bring down some highlights and crank down the black. So this is with Lumetri color, without it. So with the Lumetri color, you're just adding a lot more like texture and contrast. If we reveal this composition in the project, sorry my project's really messy, it's still open from my edit for her video. We're just gonna rename this to Crime Photo Official. Now what we can do is create a new composition with nothing in it, and I'll just bring my Crime Photo Official into this project. Mm -hmm. So now we have this great composited image of this man. And so now that we've brought our photo into this composition, what we're gonna do is click on the 3D button. So it's now a 3D layer. We'll come up to Layer, New, and Camera. I'll just do the default camera. And over here in the corner, instead of one views, we're gonna switch it to two. So you can see here, you can see my camera. So now I can animate the camera however I want with the photo inside the composition. And we want a cool stylized background. So you can see here, I have a folder filled with cool paper textures. Again, you can Google paper texture, or go to any of the stock sites I recommended in the beginning or in the link description below to find a nice background texture for yourself. This one looks super sexy, so I'm just gonna drag this photo into my composition. What I'm gonna do is turn this into a 3D layer, and you can see in the right side here with my camera, I can just select this and push it into the background like so. So now when I move my camera, there's some really good parallax between our composited photo here and the background. So I can move up and down and it's looking like this photo is like floating in this cool space. Now to give it a cool stylized border like I did in the video, I used uh, an asset of a negative film strip. I downloaded a bunch of different film strips off of Google. I was trying to figure out different ways to like connect this to the background. You can see I was thinking about using paper clips but the negative film strip really won me over. And so I'll use this one right here and drag that into our composition. We'll turn this into a 3D layer and I will put it behind our crime photo. And you can see it was a little bit too big for this asset. So we're just gonna customize it a little bit. I'm gonna go back to one view so we can see how I'm doing this. I'm gonna move the anchor point of this asset to the top right corner of Wendell here so I can scale the negative film strip to match the vertical length right here. I'll create a mask on this border here that I really like and I will duplicate this and delete the mask and on this second border, I'll just bring it right here and create a mask over this right one. So now we have this cool film negative strip look. I'll bring the film strip in a little closer and you can see it kind of has this ugly blackness like still it's not like transparent the way you would want it so I selected both of my film strips and the blending mode that worked best for this specific look was exclusion if I go back to two views now you can see that our film strip is connected to our dude really well that looks so good and to make the film strip kind of stand out a little better let's grab our background layer I'll isolate this for now in effects and presets we'll type in tint and I will put that on our paper background and I'm going to select our map blacks too, and I'll give it a cool dark blue background look. That looks really nice. And now I'll make my first camera animation. And the way I like to animate my cameras here in After Effects is not necessarily on the camera layer, but with a null object. So I'll come up to Layer, New, and Null Object. I'm gonna turn it into a 3D layer, click on the camera, and take the Parent and Link tool and connect it to the null. So now this null object controls the camera. I'll hit P to drop down position and create a keyframe right here where I like it. And I will start the animation by animating it to kind of go up like this. Grab these two keyframes and easy ease them. In the graph editor, I'm going to bring the first keyframe to the top so it starts fast. And then I'm gonna bring in the second keyframe like this so it has a nice flow to it. It's gonna start fast and end slow. And if we watch that back, it just looks amazing. Now let's say I wanna scale down this photo. It's not scaling down the negative film strip along with it. So I'll grab my two film strips and 
parent and link it to the crime photo. So I can actually scale this down a little bit if I wanna like reformat or resize this composition. I'll grab our text layer and I'll type out this guy's name, which was Wendell Tucker. Ignore the font for now, it's very ugly, but we are gonna reposition it to how we want it. And I'm gonna use the font we use in the video, which is Fritz Quadrata. I'm gonna get rid of the stroke turn it white, scale it up a little bit. So the effect I use to get the green and red chromatic aberration on the text is Deep Glow. So in effects and presets, we'll type in Deep Glow and we'll bring that onto our text, which we have to remember to turn to a 3D layer. So we'll bring that down below Wendell Tucker. I'm gonna bring down the exposure and the radius just a little bit. And right here under chromatic aberration, we're going to check that. And you can see right now you get that sexy chromatic aberration look. I'll go back to one views for this. And I personally thought red and green was a major vibe. We can control how much chromatic aberration we want. Obviously we don't want something crazy like this, something more subtle, maybe like that. So when we play the animation back, oh, we have this beautiful crime scene animation. And now to give this more pop and some contrast, what we wanna do is come up to layer, new, and solid. And I'm gonna create a black solid that's gonna act as a vignette for the background. I'm actually gonna bring it below everything but our paper background and come up to the top and grab our ellipse tool. And I'm just gonna make a big ellipse on the background. Something that's gonna look like this, and I'm gonna change the mask to subtract. And if I drop down our mask options, I'm just gonna crank up the feather. So we have this really intense vignette. And we are not gonna turn this into a 3D layer, so it always is in the background and acts as a constant vignette through, throughout the animation. Now, this is very center focused. It would be nice if we had some assets on the side. So you can see here in After Effects, I have a bunch of different scanned PDFs. Let's use this one, I like this. I'll drag this PDF into our composition and I'm gonna turn this into a 3D layer. And so what we're gonna do is use the blending mode divide. So everything that's black turns white. I'll put that up in the corner here and I'm gonna move my anchor point to this position so I can scale this up to create some nice border here. So it kind of looks like we're scaling through a document. So now if I watch this animation back, it's gonna look something like this. Ooh, that looks so good. Kind of like floating through a PDF image. Now to add some sexy final touches to this animation, I'm gonna grab my Wendell Tucker text layer and I kinda wanna animate the text to flicker a little bit. So I'll, I'll hold down the Alt button and click on exposure. And I'm gonna type in the expression wiggle, parentheses, three comma, 0.1, see how that looks. So now if we zoom in on the text, you can see that it's flickering a little bit. Maybe we wanna make it more intense and I'll change the wiggle from three to eight. Yeah, look at that, the text is now flickering, which just adds this extra juicy detail to this look. And then one of my other final touches I like to add to these animations that I make for people is dust and scratches. You can see here I've downloaded some dust and scratches animations that always look so sexy. And for this, I want it to be minimal. So you can see here, this dust and scratches asset is very chill. So I'll drag that on top of everything. And this does not need to be a 3D layer. And this I'll turn to add. And with a lot of these looping texture animations, you can see that it's not long enough. And instead of like duplicating it and just offsetting it a bunch of times like this in your composition to make sure that it's there for the whole time, what we're gonna do instead is we're going to right click on this and go to time and enable time remapping. And we're gonna go one frame over from the very end of this and create a time remapping keyframe and delete the last one. And we're gonna alt click on time remapping and we're gonna type in loop, loop out. This one right here, just click on it. And now we can drag this layer for as long as the composition and it's just going to infinitely loop and it'll be there for the entire duration. You know, even though this is a subtle dust and scratches effect, I do think it's showing up too much. So what I'm gonna do is in effects and presets, I'll type in curves and bring that on our layer and I'll click on here and we're actually gonna go to alpha. Let me zoom in on some of these dust and scratches you can see here. And if I grab the very top, if you drag this down, it'll get rid of like a, a lot of the opacity to this alpha layer. You see what I, it's very subtle, but I'm making these less visible, similar to just like lowering the opacity. But now it's much more subtle, and I think that is a major vibe. And now let's say we wanted to continue this animation and go down like in the video and pan to another person. I'm actually going to go to layer, new and null object, turn that into a 3D layer, 
and the null object we use to control the camera, we're going to link this to the new null. So on our new null object, we can create another camera animation. So I switch this back to two views and I'll create a position keyframe for our new null object. I'll easy ease it and then over time, pan the camera, animate this null object to pan down. And right here, you can see our background isn't big enough, which is an easy fix. In effects and presets, we can type in a repetile and put that on this background layer. And if we switch the tiling from repeat to unfold, we can expand down and just keep uh, our background infinitely long, you know what I mean? And so altogether with those new um, null object camera movement, we now pan down, continuing down the document. And what's amazing, because our official crime photo is a pre-comped composition, what we can do is if we go to our original composition, right click on it and reveal in composition, all we need to do is duplicate this composition, cr crime photo two, and we can drag in any photo we want and it's gonna have the same styling. So what I can do is actually isolate this Tucker photo and if you hold alt, on a layer in your project uh, menu and drag that onto the layer you've selected, it will replace the image with the one that you want. So now I have this, and since this guy isn't the, uh, the victim in this video, I'll just get rid of the blood assets. And so we have a little bit of separation. I'll just change the where the texture of the, f of the paper is. That looks pretty cool. So I'll go back to our composition right here. And when it pans down, what I'll do is I'll search for my crime photo, my new one, just drag that in here, turn it to a 3D layer and place it in the middle. So now we have like kind of created this process of being able to make as many fo crime photos as we want. I'll just frame that to match the first one and I'll duplicate our Wendell tech Tucker text, bring that down here and we'll name this guy evil bad guy. I'll go back to one view so we can see that even better. And now we're going through our list of people involved in the trial. It's very cool. And it's easy as duplicating our uh, previous negative film strips and I'll just move them down so our character here can also have them. We'll just resize everything until it looks how we want. And so this is how I made this animation for Michelle Carre's new video showing all the suspects in a DNA like analysis during a trial. I think it's really cool and works super well. You can see in the final product, I downloaded some tape assets, which I put on the sides of these to kind of make it look like it's taped onto the background. I thought that was a nice fun touch. And of course, to make this look more old school and gritty, what I'm actually gonna do is hit Command K to open up our composition settings. And instead of a 23.976 frame rate, I'll change it to 15. It makes the look more choppy. I think most motion designers who do these graphics for YouTube videos, if, if they're worth their salt, they'll do this trick because a motion graphic at 15 frames per second just feels more raw and authentic. And so that is how you do a motion graphic for Michelle Carre. Don't take my job, do it for somebody else. But I thought this would be a fun motion design to break down. I hope everybody learned something new today in this after Effects tutorial. And it's time to thank my incredible sponsor, Squarespace. I have to introduce to you Squarespace's design intelligence. You might not know this about me, but I have the biggest collection of vintage life magazines in the world. And I wanna create a site showing off this American history in a really pretty way. And so with Squarespace's design intelligence, I can create a website that looks perfect and vibey. So with these vintage magazines, maybe some cool vintage looking shapes to show off some covers a nice color scheme that really matches the dark tones of these magazines. And if I need some assistance, they have award-winning templates. So I actually have a lot of duplicates of these vintage magazines and I wanna sell them as collector's items to other people. And what's amazing about that is Squarespace has online stores you can create. So if you have products, whether that's jewelry, plants, vintage magazines, you can create a beautiful online store with Squarespace. And even better, Squarespace Payments is endless. They have all the popular payment methods like Klarna and Afterpay, all the buy now, pay later options. And if you don't think Squarespace is incredible yet, well, how about the fact that they gave me a code to give you for 10% off your first website or domain. So go get a discount on creating a website that will bolster your image as a professional. Really, anybody can benefit from having an amazing website. So build it with Squarespace. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.